Welcome to a European B road. I have traveled 7,500 kilometers and I want to review a car today that we never got in Canada. And with so many options, what could possibly be my choice for a European car to review? The Renault Twingo. Welcome to the Netherlands, where I am a YouTuber who's not come to ride bicycles. Well, actually I have, but that'll be in a different video. I have come to drive cars we don't get. For some reason, I decided that should be a Renault Twingo, a small French economy hatchback that we never got in Canada. And I'm excited. This is a second generation Renault Twingo in red, as shown on Top Gear. That was a Renault Club Sport, so it had 133 horsepower. I don't even know what this one has. I picked it up five minutes ago. I'm so excited to be driving a little city car. We don't get French cars in Canada, so it's so exciting for me to drive something that I would never be able to drive in Canada. I might even want to import one. Now this isn't my first foray into a French car. Back at home, I have a 1981 Peugeot 505 diesel that I use as a rallycross car. And really, that's what people remember French cars being. Strange, quite soft, moderately unreliable, and old. And I think that the problem is we don't realize that they still sell them new, they're still around, and they're actually really nice little cars. The rear seats slide backwards and forward, so you can have more luggage space or you can have more space for the people. French cars in North America are considered to be oddities. French cars in the rest of Europe are considered to be cars. They're just French. One other thing that got carried over from the first generation Twingo along with those rear seats was these unique little door handles so wonderfully French about this style. Why would you have it on the side? Our rental car on this trip is a Kia Sportage, which is a normal car for Canada. Feels quite big here, but in this car, oh, the roads are perfect size. This makes all the European roads that I've felt really cramped on feel just normal. I feel like I've got room to play around in my little Twingo. Oh, this is delightful. I like this little car already. Of course, it may seem like this is just another small economy hatchback, and to actually quite a few people who I was asking about finding one of these cars, they went, what? But as a Canadian, it's quite special. I watched Top Gear, I watched Jeremy Clarkson do a variety of special tests on this car from Mr. Needham, and I always thought it was so special. We don't have very many small hatchbacks, or at least not many of them get purchased, and we haven't had a French car sold in Canada since 1993. So I'm very excited to drive this little economy car to see what it's really like with a Canadian perspective. From an interior perspective, it is quite a bit like most of the city cars you would see. I mean, Yaris's, Honda Fits, and the Chevy Sparks, they all have those center-mounted dashboard infotainment systems because it makes it really easy to build it as a right-hand drive or a left-hand drive. It's not particularly different from other city cars, other than like the little bit of heritage to its Twingo, the fun name, the, the playful attitude. I don't think this would be exceptionally different to drive than a Yaris a Fit, a Chevy Spark. I just happen to like it because it's French. And honestly, that might be good enough for me. One thing that always surprises me about small city cars is how much space they actually engineer into these things. I fit very comfortably. I constantly have headroom problems, but I have great visibility. All the side windows and the front windows are large. The mirrors are well placed. It's really impressive how such a small car that you would think would have a small cabin was really quite well engineered to be a large space inside. I keep saying that Canada doesn't buy these, but Canada has the option to buy these. The Toyota Yaris, the Chevy Spark, the Honda Fit, these are all similarly sized cars that we get at home. They're Honda Jazzes here, or uh, Opel Carls. I didn't know the, the Chevy Spark in the Netherlands is an Opel Carl as well, which is just awesome. These are cars that you can buy. You can't get a French one, but this isn't all that different from other ones from different manufacturers. The thing is, you just don't really have a need for them. The best-selling car in North America for the past 52 years has been a Ford F-Series pickup truck because it's not hard to own something bigger. The tax incentive, there's no taxes on a bigger car, and our fuel is relatively cheap. It's $3.10 a liter here. So while they're available, this never would have been sold here because it wouldn't have made sense for Renault to try to tell us to buy a weird old French hatchback when we already don't buy little Japanese ones.
If the second generation Twingo was held on its own, I think it would be quite an endearing little face. But the problem is, is it followed up the first generation Twingo with that little frog-eyed face that was really a revolutionary design for the small city car. The original designer of that car really broke expectations when the car sold far better than expected, but his next couple of projects, while also being as interesting, didn't do nearly as well, notably being the Renault Aventime. So when this car came out, it was much more designed with a board perspective, so it was a lot less revolutionary and much more normal. But it still had a very cheeky little face, it was still noticeably a Twingo. After watching Top Gear, of course, I wanted to do giant Larry handbrake turns and skid it around, and if I ever buy one, I will. This is my aunt's neighbor's car, so I can't really do that. I have been saying that this car drives similar to other hatchbacks we get, the Honda Fit, the Toyota Yaris, and the Chevy Spark. I don't want to completely sell this car short. The Honda Fit, very fun car. Toyota Yaris, ungodly boring. There's something about how Toyota makes a car that just isn't fun unless it's a special model like the GR Yaris. So driving the Toyota Yaris, snooze fest. I could not be bothered to drive it. This one's actually quite entertaining. The engine's peppy. I really quite enjoy this car and I'm starting to get a little feel for it. I think that the first generation Twingo might be something I enjoy more because of its more unique styling and character. But this particular car still has a little charm to it. I would love to tell you that the Renault Twingo is a revolutionary hatchback. It's better than anything I've ever experienced before and you should definitely try one. But in reality, it's a small French hatchback, fairly mainstream design made famous by its predecessor and a TV show. It's a lovely car, but so are its competitors. If you do want to try this at home, the Honda Fit of the Chevy Spark are great examples of small hatchbacks you can have a great time in. But if you want to drive the Twingo, well, there is still something special in that. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you again.